Good morning and welcome in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, where the Savior promises in our gospel lesson, the Counselor, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who by the word of the Lord creates faith in the heart and life eternal. We'll learn more about that in the readings and in the uh, sermon for today. We will follow the order of the service setting two on page 172 in the front part of your hymnal, noting the change when we get to the Lord have mercy, the Kyrie. Those words will be spoken this morning and the hymn of praise uh, has also changed to reflect the festival day. We begin then with our first hymn, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord. As you are comfortable and able now, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sins the Lord does not 
Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things which we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Father, one God now and forever. The congregation may be seated and I invite forward the children of the congregation for the children's message. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Find a spot. Everybody find a spot in the circle. Come on in. Make room. Make room. Make room. Come on, sit down. 
Here, Matthew, scoot over a little bit. There we go. All right, everybody bring it in here. How are we this morning? Good? Wonderful? All right. I have a picture here, which you might see in a doctor's office. I'm sure all of you have been to a doctor's office for your wellness checkups, usually before the school, but sometimes uh, in the summertime. And you see all the bones that your body has. This is about your size. Of course, girls have the uh, same bones for the most part as boys do. And uh, if we were to x-ray a part of your body, you would be able to see those bones and you would know or the doctor would know that uh, if you had a break in a bone that would need a cast and need to be set still so it could heal. And you see all the names of all the bones, the spine going down the back, the ribs in the rib, uh, rib cage, uh, all sorts of names for the bones in your legs and your arms. And of course, we can't see those because we've got skin and uh, it'd be mighty weird if you saw people walking around with skeletons. Right? That's not the way it usually works. God has made us in, in a glorious way that we have uh, not just bones, but blood and, and skin and muscles and nerves that make our body work exactly as it should. And we give him praise for that. Well, you're going to hear a, a, a vision in just a minute about bones. Ezekiel says dry bones, bones that aren't put together, bones that you might see in a barren desert and wonder what they are, or sometimes you see uh, dead animal bones on a, on a trail and, and you wonder um, what happened to that animal. Well, Ezekiel's going to be walking around in a valley of dry bones, and the Lord is going to ask him a question. Can these dry bones live? And of course they can, not, not uh, unless God does something. And so God says, speak to these dry bones. Have them hear the word of the Lord and have them come together through my word. And wouldn't you know it? By a miracle of God, the bones all came together and muscles started forming and nerves started connecting and they became uh, full bodies, but they didn't have the breath of life in them. So Ezekiel was told by God, prophesy again so that the breath of life, the wind of life can come into them. And so Ezekiel did and all of a sudden you had all of these full bodies of men and, and women standing up and they were a vast army as the Lord brings life, life to our bodies, but also life to us spiritually. And that's what we celebrate today, our spiritual life through the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I have sent the Holy Spirit. I have sent the counselor into your heart. And when you hear my word, like these bones heard the word of the Lord and they came to life. You come to life through faith in me. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He gives us spiritual life. We get to know Jesus as our Savior and know that our sins are forgiven. He holds us together not only physically but also spiritually. And as he holds us together spiritually, gives us faith. We know he is a savior who loves us and cares for us and gives us heaven. So you're going to hear that vision in our first lesson. You're also going to hear about the first day of Pentecost and there's an art book waiting for you about the first day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit's work there. And you're going to hear the words of Jesus and his promise to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's always working inside of you strengthening your faith, showing you your Savior, and giving you peace in him. So listen for those things. If this picture will help you, remember this picture as we go through the lessons today and how God brings life to us. That's 
that's all I have for you. Make sure you pick up the activities, and I'll see you next time. All right? And we begin then looking at the scripture lessons for this day with the vision of Ezekiel from chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley which was full of bones. He had me pass through them and go all over among them. There were very many on the valley floor, and they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these dry bones live? I answered, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I am about to make breath enter you so that you will live I will attach tendons to you. I will put flesh back on you. I will cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you will live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling, as the bones came together, one bone connecting to another, as I watched, tendons were attached to them, then flesh grew over them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind that this is what the Lord God says. From the four winds, come, O wind, and breathe into these slain so that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, Breath entered them, and they came back to life. They stood on their feet, a very, very large army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They are saying our bones are dried up, our hope is lost. We have been completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them that this is what the Lord God says. My people... I am going to open your graves and raise you up from your graves and bring you back to the soil of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit in, in you and you will live. I will settle you on your own land and you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed for this Pentecost festival is Psalm 85, printed on the next page, and we sing together.
We continue now in God's word with our second lesson, the account of Pentecost and the special pouring out of the Holy Spirit from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the rushing of a violent wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw divided tongues that were like fire resting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages since the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak fluently. Now there were godly Jewish men from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When this sound was heard, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were completely baffled and said to each other, Look, Are not these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them speaking in his own native language, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia and of Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring in our own languages the wonderful works of God. They were all amazed and perplexed. They kept saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocked them and said they are full of new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and spoke loudly and clearly to them, men of Judea and all you residents of Jerusalem, understand this. And listen closely to my words. These men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. On the contrary, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is what God says will happen in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a rising cloud of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And this will happen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing the gospel acclamation. The gospel appointed for this Pentecost festival from the gospel of John chapters 15 and 16. Jesus said, when the counselor comes who I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will testify about me. And you also are going to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going away to him who sent me, and not one of you asks me where are you going, yet because I have told you these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is good for you that I go away, for if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment. 
about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated now and we'll sing our next hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. I will hear what the Lord proclaims, peace to his people. Amen. The lesson we meditate on this morning for the Festival of Pentecost, the first lesson, Ezekiel's vision from Ezekiel chapter 37. Dear friends, it's like the scene from a movie. The protagonist and the people who are with him have reached the most harrowing part of their journey. Before they reach their destination, they must pass through the hottest, deepest, most treacherous valley. The bones that line the dry, sandy floor indicate that there's no food or water for miles. Who knows? Who knows what lurks behind rocks and crevices and caves? Who knows what comes out in the nighttime? Will everyone make it? Or will their physical bodies and emotional wills dry up, wither, and die? Just like so many others before them. The situation is a hopeless one. The prophet Ezekiel receives a vision through the Holy Spirit, a vision that begins with a hopeless situation. Walking all through the valley where he is placed, he sees nothing but bones, ribs, arms, legs, spines, skulls, everything dry, dead, eerie, and silent. Not a place anyone wants to be. From God's explanation of the vision, in the closing verses of our text, the Lord says, These bones are the whole house of Israel. They are saying, Our bones are dried up. 
our hope is lost. We have been completely cut off. Ezekiel would know something about that. He had been God's mouthpiece in Babylonian exile. He had been instructed by God to tell the people, the reason you are here in Babylon is because you turned away from the Lord. You abandoned his commands and forgot his precepts. Your worship and sacrifices to God were empty. Your treatment of your neighbor was deplorable. The indulgence of your sinful desires is appalling. Your love for God and trust in his promises is non-existent. Sounds like enough to get your attention, right? Enough to call anyone to repent from their sin, which was the Lord's gracious goal. However, even in captivity, the people of Israel were still stone-hearted and stiff-necked. You see, they believed that this deportation to Babylon from their homeland was only a minor inconvenience. After all, they were God's chosen people. They had a long, rich history of heroes and kings. In fact, there was still a king sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, albeit a puppet king of Nebuchadnezzar. The temple of God, it still stood in Jerusalem. Oh yes, they thought, we'll be back. Just watch. Until God said through Ezekiel, the temple would be destroyed. That once hallowed place of godly worship had turned into a den of evil and prostitutes and child sacrifice. So when King Nebuchadnezzar finally had enough, had enough of all the puppet kings he installed who constantly rebelled against him, he sacked the city of Jerusalem, breaking down its walls, destroying the temple, leaving not one stone on top of another. That got people's attention. So much so that as word drifted back to the exiles in Babylon, they grieved and despaired over their sins. Our bones are dried up. We have been completely cut off. The vision continues as God commands Ezekiel prophesy prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I am about to make breath enter you so that you will live. I will attach tendons to you. I will put flesh back on you. I will cover you with skin and put breath in you and you will live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Bones came together. Nerves, muscles, organs, Skin, all that was missing was the breath of life, God's gift of life. So God says, prophesy, Ezekiel, to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind that this is what the Lord God says from the four winds. Come, come, O wind, and breathe into these slain that they may live. And we are told, breath entered them. They rose, they stood, and they were like a vast army. In his explanation of what all of this means, God says, My people, I am going to open your graves and raise you up from your graves and bring you back to the soil of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Yes, there would be there would be, at God's good time, a return to Jerusalem. And when they saw it, the people were to give thanks and give glory and praise to God. However, more importantly, more importantly, there would be a return to faith. I will put my spirit in you, 
and you will live. And you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. The Holy Spirit would kindle in them the fire of God's love and renew trust in his many promises, his everlasting promises, promises that pointed to the Messiah, pointed to that Savior, the Savior that would come and complete the plan of salvation. And of course, that plan was fulfilled in Jesus. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will do this. And by my saving name, you will know that it is I who have done it, says the Lord. The perfect picture. The perfect picture for a disheartened people. The perfect picture to, to describe exactly what happened at the miracle of Pentecost. Thousands upon thousands hearing the gospel and coming to faith through the work of the Holy Spirit the perfect picture that describes you and comforts you. See, there was a time, there was a time when you lay in the dust of death and desolation. <coughs> there was a time your sins covered you. You were dead in your transgressions, as the Apostle Paul says. No one could come and help you out of this situation, of this spiritual mess, because everyone else, by nature, is as spiritually dead as you once were. You couldn't compromise with God. You couldn't cooperate with God in any way. You couldn't even cry out to God for help. Dead is dead. Mercifully, God made you alive. He made you alive in the gospel of Jesus. He took you at your baptism and he put his Holy Spirit in you. Or for some who come, came to the Lord later in life, hearing the word of the Lord, the gospel, the Holy Spirit worked faith in their heart and then they were baptized. Either way, the credit all goes to God. God made alive what once was dead. And he has maintained that life for you to this very day. When was the last time you felt your strength dry up? When was the last time you felt your faith was parched and you needed a spiritual drink? Day after day, the devil hounds you with temptations, temptations to which you have fallen because you relied on your own strength and not on the strength of the Lord. You did not turn to God. Your pride has blinded you from what your sin actually is doing to you and to others because all you have cared about recently is you. Maybe your worship, your worship to God is lacking because you take that worship for granted. Or perhaps you think times are good as far as you can see, so maybe there's no need. Perhaps the Lord has had to shake you awake for you to realize the spiritual carelessness that you are experiencing and where it has exactly gotten you. Maybe in love, the Lord has sent consequences to safeguard you from further injuring your faith and forgetting about him. Give thanks. Give thanks that the God of free and faithful grace is not so quick to forget you as you might be of him. He has brought you here so that you should confess your sins and receive his word of forgiveness for Jesus' sake. This forgiveness renews you, liberates you, strengthens you, and makes you alive to serve God and your neighbor as you ought. How can this simple word of forgiveness do such things, you ask? 
How can this simple word together with simple water in baptism or simple bread and wine in a holy supper do such things? Because it is God's word. The Lord is doing these things. And you know it. You know it through faith. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he bids you rise to live and walk in peace. You will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. He makes your dry bones live through the power of his word. And it is that same word by which all the dry bones of every nation can be made alive. You are proof. You are proof that the Lord makes alive. Therefore, you are the perfect disciple to bring that living word to others. God gave this charge to his prophet Ezekiel. God gave this charge to the disciples of that first Pentecost. And God gives this charge to you. Go, spread the good news. Say to the weak, there is strength. Say to the weary, there is rest. Say to the burdened that their sins are forgiven. Say to the despairing that there is hope. It is found in Jesus Christ. Tell them about Jesus in whom there is life. Life to the abundance of eternity. How can your word do such great things? Well, thankfully, it is not your word that you are speaking any more than it was Ezekiel's word that he was prophesying. When you speak about Jesus, that is God's word, isn't it? You may not be quoting verse by verse or chapter by chapter, but you are testifying about your Savior and what he has done for you. And that means that the Holy Spirit can use those words to spring faith to life in the heart of person after person after person after person through you. As God says to our great comfort in the words of Isaiah, my word will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish whatever I please, and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent, <coughs> I sent it. God's word accomplishes God's purpose always. If you doubt, if you doubt, ask the Holy Spirit for help, for that is the purpose for which he was sent. The counselor was sent to remind you of the truth of the gospel. He was sent to give you words to speak, whether in front of co-workers or counsel. He will fill you with compassion for people as you help them confront their sin. He will fill you with love as you apply the healing remedy of the gospel. He will fill you with courage. Fill you with courage even if through you his word meets ridicule and rejection. He will remind you that you have not believed in vain. He will remind you that your eternity is secure with him. He points you to Jesus. His power to save has not diminished. His power to protect you is not in decline. His love for you has never decreased. Can dry bones live? By the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord planted in your heart. The word of the Lord that makes you part of a vast army. A great multitude, Revelation says, that no one can count from every nation, every tribe, every people, every language that will stand in front of the throne of the Lamb in absolute victory. 
So the answer is yes. A resounding yes. Then you will know. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And I have done it, declares the Lord. All to his praise and glory. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please join me now in the prayer of the Church for Pentecost. We speak responsively. Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, enlighten us with your gifts, strengthen and keep us with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Spirit of life, breathe life into those dead in sin, the nations who do not know you, and the people who have not heard your voice. Let your word go forth to call them to life, hope, and strength. Spirit of wisdom, on Pentecost, you descended on the apostles as tongues of fire. Fill us with all knowledge and spiritual understanding. Spirit of grace, bless us, comfort and uphold our hearts. Give us strength to persevere in your word. Call on you in prayer and serve you with joy. Spirit of compassion, be the blessed advocate and comforter for those who are in need. Let each day bring them the word of your unfailing love. Strengthen their trust in you. Preserve their lives and bring them out of trouble. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. O Holy Spirit, by the brightness of your light, you instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by your holy work we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your holy comfort through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The assembly may be seated, and as the offering is received, we sing from our 93 hymnals the familiar hymn, O Spirit of Life, O Spirit of God.
One final time we stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you give us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart. That being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated and we'll sing our final hymn. Good morning. Welcome one and all once again to the Lord's house on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday celebrating the festival of the coming of the Spirit. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, most of them are in your bulletin. I'll just uh, 
point out a couple. Uh, one that is in the bulletin, the Wells Michigan District Conferences, looking for a layman to attend with me, uh, as is required by each congregation of our district. So please, gentlemen, uh, if you do have the time, please let me know. Registration deadline is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Also, um, don't forget that not next week, but hopefully the week after, we will begin to worship on those non-communion Sundays in the yard of the parsonage. So be sure to pack away those lawn chairs in a couple of weeks. Also, if you haven't taken a look at the facility, facility cleaning procedures on the narthex wall, we could sure use your help. We'll make up the schedule uh, here after this next Sunday and, and go from there. But if you can help in any small or big way, if you can just get the highs uh, of uh, the sanctuary and the buildings or just the lows, please sign up and we will work accordingly with you. Um, it certainly is nice. I know we've had our comments uh, prior to the Ascension service and on through that this place looks wonderful, all spick and span, and we'd like to keep it that way. So please give that uh, your consideration. I will see you for Bible study as soon as we are dismissed. You are alive. How about that? Your physical flesh and bones are alive, of course, but you are alive, most importantly, through faith provided by the Holy Spirit as you hear the word of the Lord. You know your Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a good week.